Yeah. ADAS and the business cycle. Have we talked to find AD? Okay, I couldn't remember. It. Economic growth, we kind of talked about this. This is increasing our real GDP. Not nominal GDP, but real GDP. This isn't Jenny getting an increase in the paycheck. This is Jenny bringing home more doctor, bottles of Dr. Pepper each week. Right? That's changing her real income. So, real GDP, that's economic growth. Increase in the real GDP. We can buy more stuff, we make more stuff, more things happen in the economy, jobs, that kind of stuff. When the economy grows, things happen. What things happen? Our incomes go up, jobs are being created, so what's going to happen to consumption? Oh, dude, my transitions are broken. Snap. I need to. Okay, here we go. Consumption is going to go up. We get more money, what are we going to do with it? Almost Spend it. So we didn't think. Uh, the government. If we're getting more money, what are we doing? We're giving more of it to the government. What's the government going to do with more money? Spend it. Um, business investment. You give businesses more money, what are they going to do with it? Spend it. Industrial production. Making stuff. It's going to go up as well. Let me give you a little hint here. We're talking about the GDP going up, right? What is GDP? Yes, and it is measured by? Yes, if GDP is going up, one of these four has got to be going up at least, right? Oh, I guess, okay, I know that went away. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that back. Consumption goes up, GDP goes up. Business investment goes up. GDP goes up. Government spending goes up. GDP goes up, right? So not all of them had to go up for the GDP. Unemployment. Well, yeah, oh, it may only be one. It's usually going to end up being more than one. If businesses are making and selling more, they're creating jobs. So businesses making more, spending it with. Why is the business going to invest in new tools? The investment is what? Buying tools and equipment. Right. Why would a business buy tools and equipment? To more tools and equipment than the tools and equipment they already have. Because they're planning on making more stuff. And if you're going to be making more stuff, guess what? They're going to need more people to be using these new tools and equipment to make more stuff. And what happens when that happens? More money in the pockets of human beings. Yeah, well, we're going to spend it. Right? And then what happens when there's more money in our pockets? Government spending. So if you can get, and this is kind of a little bit of Republican economic philosophy in part one. If you can increase business investment, get businesses to be buying more tools and equipment, or whatever, get the economy going to the point that businesses say, hey, we can sell more, which means we need to make more, so let's buy our tools and equipment. If you can get this going up, then this is going to follow, this is going to follow. And you have big growth in GDP that may result from a relatively smaller increase in business investment. Make it a little bit easier on business, and that's going to snowball. Easier on business, business is making more money, workers are making more money, the government's making more money, or the workers are spending more money, which is going to make it easier on businesses. They're going to be selling more, so they're going to be buying even more, and it's snowballing. The multiplier effect, that's one version of the multiplier effect for the textbook that none of you heard. Unemployment. When the economy is growing, what's happening to the number of people out of work? It's going down. Real wages and incomes. They're going to be increasing. This is going to be Jenny is now getting more than 100 Dr. Peppers worth of pay each week. That's a real wage. Why? If unemployment, I'm going to get in my area here. They can ignore the next few ball points. Unemployment is down, which it is right now. So businesses, like, the economy's growing. I need more workers to make more stuff. But how many workers are there out there available for me to hire? There ain't that many of them, right? Because unemployment is down. There ain't many workers sitting there saying, I need a job. Give me a job, please, please, please. So what are we going to have to do in order to hire people? We've got to steal workers away from other businesses. So how can we steal workers away from other businesses and have them give up their seniority and their vacation days and all that kind of crap? 
at a cost of import and minus inflation, right? So wages will be going up because the businesses are having to compete with one another to pay the workers to get the workers that they need. And guess what's starting to happen here in the last few months? Finally, we're getting to the point in the recovery that wages are starting to go up. And businesses are starting to do, we've got to do stuff to hang on to the employees that we have. So if you got things like Amazon going up to $10 an hour or $12, it's $15 an hour is going to be the bare minimum that their workers are going to be getting starting here in another month. Well, that's the that's the um, 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 part-time living to the people up yeah, but still, fifteen dollars with no benefits is better than eight dollars with no benefits. Because that's what they were getting before. Well, they they cut a lot of benefits from full time people too. Because I know a couple people yeah. that they're married and working in Amazon, and they got cut back from like their maternal like, their maternal leave and all that kind of stuff. They get none now. They get um. Not as well, they get no pay for maternity leave, but yeah, they get yeah. family medical leave back, yes, but yeah, so okay, yes. Some people gain, some people lose. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so unemployment's going down, wages are going up, incomes are going up, but ooh, prices are going up. Well, guess what? Because you got more customers banging on the door saying, We want you cakes, we want you cookies, we want you chainsaws. And the business is like, okay, we need to make more. In order to make more, we got to buy more of us refrigerator. Do we have that stuff? No. We got to hire more workers. We got to train them. So just because more people are knocking on the door tomorrow saying, I want chainsaws, doesn't mean we can make the extra chainsaws tomorrow. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay there from the time that the customers are showing up saying, we want more until the company can deliver. Think about all those people. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're like, gee, if only a store within the 100 mile radius had a generator that I could buy. Finally got electricity back in the day. Oh, y'all did. Yeah, I did get a kind of lost electricity. It was gone when I got home Thursday and didn't get back until Tuesday afternoon. Thank you. Did you get one? I didn't believe And it took me an extra hour to get home because all the water and trees and stuff was using Thursday. And then Tuesday, I am like five miles away from campus when the text comes in saying campus is closed. Oh, we were here. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, well, y'all didn't have a two hour drive to get here. <laughs> ah, just like, I don't care. I sat in my office for a couple hours and did some work in the dark. And I was brought a bunch of junk to plug in and charge it. We got no electricity now. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Just came out ahead a little bit. <laughs> no, just a little bit. No. We charged the devices. And you know, but, then, yeah. <laughs> but then when I did get home, we had electricity back. So. Anyway. Yeah. So I still have a detour around the other side of South Boston and ask you what you're So I'm still losing 15 minutes each way. Have they opened up yet? Like, all tech schools? Have they gone back yet? Um, I don't know about the school system, but the South Side, the uh, Higher Learning Center, it's open. It was only closed Friday. It was 501, the, the yeah. water was gone and it was open. The water was gone Friday morning, and so they just had to get let out. That kind of stuff. Um, or no, maybe it was Monday morning that I went through it, anyways. <laughs> So, okay, so we got more people saying gimme, gimme, gimme. So we have a shortage. We want gimme, gimme, gimme. We want more cakes. We want more chainsaws. So the customer, the, the producer, we don't have them. So it's a shortage. So what happens when there's a shortage? Prices are going to go up. And while they're making the adjustment to make more, because and raising the prices in order to get the stuff that they need in order to buy the tools, equipment, and hire people and train them up and get them going. Because the new workers that they hire are not going to be as efficient and productive as the workers they already have, right? So the business is probably going to be, at least for short term, going to be getting a little less efficient. Upwardly, prices go up. Because what happened? Prices go up. What happened? If real wages
wages are going up, that means their prices are going up, but our incomes are going up more. So I'm so Jane's okay if the price of Dr. Pepper goes up by five percent. If her paycheck is going up by ten percent, she can still buy more Dr. Pepper, right? Mm -hmm. So to a certain extent, maybe we shouldn't complain a whole lot when prices are going up because that means the economy's humming right along and hopefully our paycheck is growing up. And did we have that conversation a week ago about you need to talk to your boss about if your paycheck ain't going up equal to the inflation rate, you need to have a conversation with your boss? Like this. Yeah. So they would just want your real income to stay the same or get better. Right. Like the um inflation goes up on like point two percent, you still want your um pay to go up percent. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually it's about two and a half percent for this last year, so you should so Jane should be going from a hundred dollars a week to hundred and two dollars and fifty cents a week, or else she can't buy as much stuff as she did before. Generally speaking, we're buying New tools and equipment. The computers we're buying now are faster than the ones a couple years ago, right? Again, so productivity is going to go up. Our workers can work more, can work better, can work faster as the economy is expanding. Interest rates. If businesses are making more money and businesses are investing more, so they're all shut, lined up in the banks, knocking on the door saying, give me money so I can buy my tools and equipment. Give me money, you give me dust. What's going to happen? The price of that money is going to go up. And what's the price of money? And interest rates, we'll talk more about that in a slightly later chapter. Interest rates go up. So not so good if you borrower, but good if you're support, if you're saver. It's what finally for the first time since y'all were in middle school. Oh, no, but since y'all were in elementary school, your savings account is gonna actually start or paying more than a penny loan. Finally, interest rates have gone up by about three quarters of a percent in the last several months and Going up a little bit more back to where they're supposed to be. The stock prices, the stock market is going to be going up too because the businesses are more valuable because they're selling more at a higher price. So that means they're making more money. So that means the future profitability of that company looks better. So that makes it owning that company more valuable. So the only bad thing that happens when the economy grows is this. The only bad thing. Everything else is good. Stock market's going up, my 401k is improving, and I'll be able to give you all middle fingers up much sooner I can retire. <laughs> right. Interest rates, well, depending on whether you're saver or a borrower. Okay, we'll call that a neutral. Productivity, good. Real, win real wages, good. Unemployment, good. Consumption, not buying more, that's good. All of these are good. So that the price stays up until they can make more stuff and goes down, or they can stay this, down. Overall, well, now this is prices in general. For individual companies, it's going to have a little going up, going down thing because I got more customers banging on the door. If uh, Matthew and Connor have more people banging on the door saying, I want cookies, I want cookies, they raise price cookies so they can. That, along with the money that they're borrowing from the bank to buy more ovens, refrigerators, to bake more cookies, well, guess what? So, their prices are going to go up, guess what? Price is going up, that's going to make it more affordable for somebody else to get into the cookie game, too, right? The ovens are better and that kind of stuff, so the increased competition prices may go up, but then they might sort of go, but they're not going to keep, for each individual company, depending, they may not keep going up, they may flatten out. But, right, guess what? So that's, that sort of part of it, the prices will keep going up anyway. Because as unemployment is going down, well, even if we do have all the ovens and refrigerators and stuff we need, well, our costs are going up because we're paying our workers more, right? So if we're paying our workers more, we're going to pass that cost on to our customers, if nothing else. We can sort of control a little bit, the businesses can control a little bit, they're borrowing to buy tools and equipment. But they don't really have that all much control of the fact of I've got to keep my workers from leaving and getting stuck with those people who graduated last in their class in your high school. You know that person. Hopefully, you were not that person. Right. So, so prices, okay. Jamie's okay. The prices go up because she's working and she's getting pay raises. It's good. She's like, okay. Yep. I, I, I hate the prices going up, but at least my income's going up better, so I'm still in better shape. 
love Lane. She's got a fixed income. Her paycheck doesn't go up. Y'all can't, y'all can't really, can't, you can't tell because she does a good job of coloring her hair, but Lovely is actually 68 years old. Y'all didn't know, she's actually 68 years old and she's collecting Social Security. And if her Social Security check does not go up, but yet prices do, what's happening? She's losing crap. She's falling behind because she's not getting a pay increase to keep up with prices. Okay, well, guess what? Social Security has possible living adjustments, so ooh, lovely and discovered. Congratulations, you look fantastic for 60 years back out. So, you know, you don't look a day over 21st. She's like, I can't even 23rd. I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm going to quit guessing. <laughs> you know, because there's this little range between, you know, young, too young, too old, whatever. It's the 22 is perfect age, and then you've been legal to drink for over a year, and that's so you cool about it. Just say no. Anyway, I eventually did. So, it's people, low income households, low income people, and fixed income people, the people that didn't save very well for retirement, that kind of stuff, they're the ones that are going to get hurt here for the price. And most all the rest of us are going to be just fine when the economy is growing because we're going to be covered. So, price is one ugly. Otherwise, economic growth is a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. We talked about it before. It's also a necessary thing because our population is growing, so we need more cookies, more chainsaws, more jobs as well. But the economy doesn't just march along at a nice, steady rate. Just like you don't drive along at a nice, fed, steady rate. Sometimes you're in your car and you're mashing on the gas pedal, speeding up. Sometimes you're in your car, you're coasting. Sometimes you in your car and you're hitting the brake pedal because you're too low light in here. Sometimes you come and you stop. Sometimes you stop slowing down and you start speeding up again. Your speed is a constant when you're out on the road. Guess what? Your speed, the speed of the growth and change in the economy isn't constant either. There are ups and downs that happen. <coughs> so we can measure that by looking at measuring the economy. How much was it this year? How much was it last year? How much was it the year before? How much was it the year before that? And it ain't going to be a straight line. Sometimes it's going up. Sometimes it's going down. 2009 is going down. 2017 is going up. 1929 is going down. Rather dramatically. <coughs> I've got the parts labeled on the next slide. So draw this curve and then we can move to the next slide. All right, well, a lot more work. You can label it. Here we go. And question on a test. Um, these things about what happens to these things when the economy grows, that quite very possibly could be questioned on a test. GDP. We're looking at uh, this word is supposed to be down here as my axis label. Our economy over time. As time goes by, the economy is growing. That is what bless you. Uh, what, what you'll see on the next slide, that is an expansion. Economy's growing and expansion. You are on the highway. You get out on the road and you hit the gas. You're speeding up. You're speeding up. Right? You're accelerating. Faster, 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 but then what happens? You, 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 see this all. you speeding up, but then you start slowing down, speeding up, right? You you when you get out of you've been doing 55 miles an hour, so 60 miles 60 miles an hour when you're 58. Then you do the thing, you get out on the data state and you do what? You go look from 60 to 75, right? But you don't do that, just the acceleration is slower until what? You get over a hill. You get over a hill or you hit the cruise control and you take your foot off of the gas and what happens? Your speed is like set there and that's as fast as you're going to go. That is the peak. The 
peak is when, which I've got it on the next slide, that's when growth stops. You've stopped growing and you've got to the top of the mountain. What happens when you're at the top of the mountain? There's nowhere to go but down. So the billy goat butts you and instead of an expansion, uh, this is why I have it on the next slide. We have contraction. That doesn't mean you go any labor. And our goat still hasn't gone to labor yet. It's expanding, it's contracting. Oh, the trigger. So here, the economy over time is getting smaller. Then you get down here, what's going on at point B? That this is going to be point B over here. What's happening there? The trading stops, the growing starts again. So everybody want to take a guess what that name is? It's trough. Oh, never exactly. That's why we didn't give it to you. It's like big trough. Yeah, it's just I know, I you know the whole science language. So I was like, it must be the name for economics. <laughs> it's the slop here. The, the slop it goes in the trough. It's a ditch. But yes, the economics in elementary school is fun. Wow. <laughs> I highly doubt it. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so, for economy shrinks, it's like more of a to that. I'll talk about what it is in a second. Expansion, the GDP is growing. Employment is growing, which means unemployment is shrinking. Okay. Unemployment is not employment, right? So, GDP is growing, employment is growing, incomes are going up, inflation, which is prices, are going up. All that good stuff that we were just talking about on those other couple slides. You hit a peak, well, we pretty much employed everybody there is to employ, so there's nobody else to hire. And we're pretty much producing all that we can produce, so we've maxed out. This is when you got your car out there on interstate, and it's going as fast as it can, and it's vibrating, and you're the engine flow, but you're going as fast as it's going to go, right? Then you had a contraction. When the next thing you start seeing tents in the underside of your hood because the cylinders are blowing, right? And you start to slow down until you get to the trough where you coast to the side of the road. Look at the lights are. Yes. So it's the, I know the, um, the chart is going to be up there, but are we going to have to close the parts? Uh, expansion, peak, contraction, trough, yes. The de definitions of them. Might be in a meshing section, but hopefully those will be fairly fair to you. But okay, but uh, that's been extra few seconds. Test this test. This this test that is Thursday. Okay. Wait a minute. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Whatever. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> this is on Tuesday. So we're coming to the cut. Okay. Yeah. So what? Yeah. <laughs> Next time is fine. No, no, no. Because <laughs> we've already posted it a couple of times. No, <laughs> just we can keep at this point, so they, they, ain't, they ain't a whole lot of people that ain't a whole lot on this test. <laughs> and at the rate we're going, ain't going to be a whole lot on the next test because, you know, one slide a day. So, oh, okay. Four. Okay. Ignore this. War. If the war is happening outside the borders of your country, what's happening? Government is spending more money, getting more troops, buying more bullets, buying more guns, buying more food for the extra troops. War is good for the economy. What got the United States out of the Great Depression of the 1930s? World War II. World War II. We started arming, we started producing stuff and giving it to England and giving it to Russia to help them to fight the Germans. And then in December 1941, Japan decided to whack the hornet's nest and then we started making even more stuff for ourselves to use in a war. That's what got us out of the Great Depression. So 
between that and the New Deal programs, the Civilian Conservation Corps and all that kind of stuff, the National Parks and all that kind of stuff that Franklin Roosevelt was trying to do. Well, that started it, but it, that alone would have been enough for World War II to put God us out of there. If the war happens within your, you know, okay, if it's a serious big honking war like World War II, yeah, you're going to get, well, I can't find tires for my car because the government's taking all the rubber away, right? And there's some food rationing. So you're going to have a decrease in consumption, but you're going to have an increased investment because the businesses are going to be having to buy more tools and equipment to be manufacturing more stuff because they've got these government contracts to be making the bullets, the guns, the airplanes, that kind of stuff. But these two are going to outweigh that shrinkage. You're going to have the economy increasing. If, if the war is happening inside the borders of your country, like the Revolutionary War for us, the Civil War for us, that's pretty much getting hit. Okay, and War of 1812, y'all forgot about that. <laughs> um, and a little bit at the tail end of the Spanish-American War, and a little bit at the tail end of the Mexican Revolution. You know, the Elmo, if you remember that, that's the Spanish-American War. And Pacho Villa, Mexican Revolution, 1900. Okay. Yes, in my grandmother's lifetime, she was out there, she was born in New Mexico, and Pacho Villa was going to be king. Government spending, yes. Household spending, well, we're kind of getting blown up and killed and that kind of stuff along the way. Investment, maybe going up, but okay, we got to spend money fixing our houses. They got bombed and blown up, but guess what? Well, we were spending the same money that we were making away instead of buying, spending it on food and shower curtains, we're spending it on bricks and two by fours. So, you're going to have a bigger decrease in consumption overall. Consumption is going to go down. Investment may or may not go up. Government spending is going to go up. But where are they going to get that money from? Not from us. So there's going to be borrowing. So there's going to be debt and this kind of stuff. Or within the borders of your country, not only will it mess up your people, but will mess up your economy too. So overall, yeah, this is going up by way of borrowing. So who's going to get the payback from that? Wherever they're borrowing money from, and they ain't borrowing it from us in the households because we're using it to rebuild our house. So, this is borrowing from foreigners. All right. So, war within your borders is going to bring down your GDP. War outside your borders is going to bring up your GDP. What? What? Yeah. Natural disasters. Natural disaster is. Let's see if I can get another slide for a look. Uh, natural disasters are going to tend more to slow down the GDP. The government's going to respond, but the government response never makes up for the amount of stuff that gets damaged anyway. Homes and businesses and that kind of stuff. So, over time, the economy takes its hits from year to year. You know, 2000, the 1990s, nothing but an expansion. Until late 2001, when a few idiots decided to fly a few airplanes into a few buildings. Then we hit a recession where the economy was contracting for about a year, year and a half. And then we got a turnaround, and then in 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're expanding again. But then that expansion, the bubble, the, the bubble, the balloon was expanding, and somebody poked it with a needle. So then the economy contracted for 2009, 2010, kind of flat there, 2010, 2011, whatever. And then what have we been doing since then? We're expanding. It's been a slower expansion, but we're expanding. So you have those big changes over time. Big thing. The Great Depression through a big chunk of it, the 1929, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then starting by 36, we flattened out and started growing. Not a whole lot until 40, 41, and then it started growing fast. But then, even within the year, you have ups and downs. Just like, even when you're out there on the interstate and you set the cruise control at 75, Still, is your car doing exactly 75 the whole time? No, sometimes you're going up a hill and it drops down to 74, or sometimes you're going down a hill and it speeds up to 76. Right. And then that's when the cop happens to come out and nail <laughs> Within the year, we have these little changes. Christmas, you have the Christmas season. What's, and what happens? Well, so most of the year, we spend our normal amount. And then what happens starting in the middle of November through December? 
We're spending more than normal, right? So you have an extra bump up in the economy, an extra bump up in spending in November and December, but then what happens in January? Yeah. Our spending goes down because instead of buying stuff, we're paying off the credit cards for stuff that we bought in November and December. Right? So you get an increase in November and December, a decrease in January. Agriculture. Farmers spending money in February and March, planting the crops, they're hiring people to help plant the crops or whatever, but then they don't need them until harvest time. In September. So at times when they need workers and stuff comes and goes. The income for the farm, nine, 10, 11 months of the year, there's no money coming in, and then there's that one month a year when they sell their entire corn crop, that's when they get the money. So there's some up and down there. Actually, the second biggest retail selling period in the United States now is back to school season. And they start back in that stuff. You start finding back to school sales in the middle of second July now. That's always bad. Yes, there's Christmas decorations. I saw somebody that had a, Christmas, a lit Christmas tree in their yard, but then they put like a witch's hat and something else on it for have just a little nod for Halloween. And then what are they going to do November first? Knock that hat off and pull up and <laughs> whatever turn your face by the web stuff off. And they got your Christmas tree. Did this on the or am I taking? Around fifty eight, uh, uh, just for between Danville and South Boston. Is it educational? <laughs> but back to school season. You spend all that money in August buying shoes for the kids, notebooks for the kids, backpacks for backpacks for the kids. Everybody's buying it now, and then you're not spending anything else until October when the kids lost their backpack, and then you got to buy them another one. They lost their lunchbox, you got to buy them another one. They get beat up because of the tennis shoes and got to buy them over there. You know, they sort of get spread out. We had that big spike in November, I mean in August. Vacation time, June, July, August. There's more spending in certain areas. Kings Dominion, they hire people for June, July, August. They let people go in August. They're bringing a few of them back to the little nighttime, October thing, whatever they got going on now, but that's about over. All right. So, you have some ups and downs within the year. Question on the test? Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. Huh? This? Yeah, why not? So, we know the economy goes up. We know the economy goes down. There are some things out there that can give us some hints about what's going to happen. We can you can tell that there's a cop on you, a cop a half mile down the road. Why? Even if you can't see them, you see people tapping their brakes. You see people tapping their brakes. What else do you see? People coming the other way, flashing their lights. You have indicators letting you know that there may be a cop over the hill. What do you see them do? You have indicators. You, know, you know where speed traps are. I've pretty much seen and then taken it on by every one of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, there are indicators in the economy. There are things that happen in the economy that can suggest, or you can see the clouds on the horizon let you know, hey, we're going to get right on in the next minutes. There are things in the economy, go, things going on that might give you the hint, hey, the economy is about to speed up, or hey, the economy is about to slow down. Is that valuable information to know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some things in the economy change before the economy moves. Some things change when the economy is moving, but then some things they don't actually change until after the economy moves. It depends. Leading in here, before the fact. They're called leading in here. Uh, there is a question on the test. Name the three types of indicators leading, lagging, and coincidental. Leaving, lagging, and coincident. There, the next three slides. Leading indicators. These things change before the economy starts growing. Think about it. Businesses get orders for new stuff. This stuff ain't been made yet. The work hasn't happened yet, so the economy hasn't grown. But we've got the order saying we want you to send us more stuff. Target asks Duracell. For more batteries, I guess Target is thinking we're going to sell more batteries in the future. Nothing has happened yet. The Target thinks they're going to sell more, so they're asking for more. 
average work week starts improving. So if the economy is growing, the economy, you, you did all like these examples on these, you're suggesting the economy is growing. Average work week starts improving. The number of hours of work work starts going up. So the number of hours starts going up. So they're working you more. So then you make more stuff. Then you end up selling, and then so your income already showed up, and then sales are going to show up later, and that's when the GDP is really going to notice the change. Uh, are you in the mountain time zone? I just, oh, I'm sorry, 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 just hit me to. <laughs> uh, unemployment claims will go down. Less people are out of work because businesses are starting to hire people because they think they're going to be selling more in the future. Right? So they think that they need more work getting done. Uh, stock prices are going to start going up because people are starting to think that the economy is going to get better, the company's going to be selling more, making more money, being healthier. Consumer expectations will start feeling better. We're less paranoid about losing our jobs. New plane and equipment orders does the same thing. New billing permits, bill billings that haven't been built yet. These are things that happened beforehand. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that example for a minute. Coincidentally, once the economy starts moving, these things start moving. They usually don't move before. These are going to be secondary. As the, you start actually seeing the C plus I plus B plus X start to move, these things are going to move. Payroll employment, the amount of people getting paid to work that's going to start going up. Production going up. They bought the new tools and equipment, and now they're going to use making stuff. So stuff getting paid. Personal incomes will be going up because you got more workers being worked now. So our incomes are going up. And manufacturing trade sales, that's going to be sales, you know, Walmart buying and actually getting the batteries from their cell. Kind of thing. Coincidental. What is a coincidence when two things happen at the same time? Right. Where a lagging indicator is lagging behind. If they pull the fire alarm and everybody just screams and runs out the door, who's going to be the person that's falling behind? They're lagging behind. After the economy starts growing, these things will start changing. The labor cost per unit of output is going to start going up. We're going to have a harder time finding workers because all the workers are working, so then we've got to hire, we've got to start paying more. Right? So you try to steal workers away from jobs they already have instead of hiring the unemployed. So then our labor costs start going up because the economy has improved to the point that unemployment's gone away. Inventory to sales ratio is between unemployment duration is shrinking. Fewer people are going to be out of work, or the length of time that people are going to be between jobs is going to get smaller. Um, don't worry about what these prime interest rate is going to go up because there's more people borrowing. Inflation rate for services is going to end up going up too. Leading, lagging, question, know what they are. I don't think I'm not going to ask you to name me some of them. Here's the, here's the example. Leading indicators, ladies. You guys shows up. Think with perfume. Some other time, fill smudge of what might be blush or lipstick on the collar shirt. You start wondering: Is he cheating? Is there something going on? You don't know that there's something going on. You start wondering as a leading indicators. Coincidental indicator. Oh, no, oh, no, no, excuse me. Leading indicator is going to be he doesn't talk to me as much. He's not spending his time with me. He doesn't seem interested in me. He doesn't come over as often. He doesn't call us often. He doesn't text us often. The idea of every lifetime he sent flower. That's the leading indicator. Coincidental indicator that he is cheating. You start noticing the smudges of the lipstick and the makeup and the smelling of the perfume and that kind of stuff. And maybe you end up showing up somewhere, show up at his house, and that's when that's when you're growing up, side dressing, you go to the back door, right? So that's stuff going on while he's cheating on you. The other stuff was hints that maybe he's starting to start, he's thinking about going astray. Because he's not talking to you, he's not communicating, he's not spending time with you, right? Those are the leading indicators that maybe this relationship started to go sideways. The coincidental indicator, you catch him with another woman, right? You know this relationship's gone sideways. And what happens after you catch him? The lagging indicators. After you catch him, 
That's when you take all of this stuff and you tear it up, right? That's when you take and you stab his tires, right? And not just among the trades within sidewalls or you gotta replace them. Right. Oh no, 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 no. You gotta be subtle about it. You don't you don't do that because then he, you take a nail and you lean it on the front side of the tire, you lean another one on the back side of the tire, so when you push it in here, whether he goes forward or backwards, one of those nails is gonna get hooked in his threads, but then you you can prove that it was you. There should be lagging indicators for what's going to happen after you find out that he's been cheating, right? Yeah, he's going to get Okay, so you're like, well, I, I wouldn't hurt anybody, and I wouldn't slice the tires, but I'll tell you what, I'll sure change my status in Facebook. I'll click <laughs> it is complicated, or I'll click it is single, or I'm single, whatever, I don't know. What are they? Single in a relationship is complicated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, they got stuff like yeah. domestic partnerships. Okay. Is all this. <laughs> no, it's complicated, right? It is. Or, and, and, and. or single, and then you do, then, then you got friend requests for the dudes you used to talk to in high school, right? So, leading, points of devil, and lagging. And then this could be the last thing. I spent, uh, yeah, I'll that just make sure. Excess capacity. The economy doesn't change immediately overnight when things happen. If the economy was to something was to change here, and we got 10% more customers, 10% more students here at Southside, our student enrollment went up by 10%. Does that mean we need to expand our building? 10% larger, we need 10% more pleasure? No, because no, I've got empty desks in this pleasure. Right? So, say, so the demand for my product might go up an interesting amount before I have to start doing the buying more ovens, buying more refrigerators, hiring more people, because I have excess capacity. I have unused desks that are still available. We have teachers that aren't teaching, uh, I'm lying here, teachers that aren't teaching full of the workload so they can handle more students, they can handle more classes. It's only once all of our classrooms are full, back to back to back to back to back, all day, every day. That's when we're like, well, we've got to build another building. Besides the new building that we're building now, right? That's different. But we don't have to add classrooms as long as we have extra classroom space. A restaurant doesn't need to expand as long as it has empty tables and chairs. During peak hours, there's no need for them to expand and add more tables and chairs. Okay, so that's why this whole thing, it's, it comes as fits and starts. But then, you know, hopefully once the snowball gets rolling, rolling downhill, it's going to get some momentum and it's just going to keep picking up. And eventually, yeah, all the restaurants are going to need to expand. Eventually, all of our classrooms are going to get full. And if it keeps rolling from there, that's a great problem to have. We just have to keep adding pleasure. They're going to kick me out of my office and back out of the trailer again, right? Okay. Excess capacity, excess extra capacity capability to produce that's unused existing capital. The ovens for refrigerators. Connor and Matthew, they've got your paper. Well, they can go. They can double their output without spending any much extra money by putting on a second shift. Instead of having those ovens and refrigerators, that ovens working eight hours a week, eight hours a day, they can have them working sixteen hours a week. Have a double, have a second shift. Have people coming in there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and staying until 2 o'clock in the morning, making the cookies and brownies and stuff that they're going to be selling the next morning. Right. So they don't have to increase spending on ovens and refrigerators right off of the bat. They can add a second shift, they can add a third shift, and then, okay, we need another. We need another oven. We need another bill. But sometimes it doesn't make sense to add a second shift or third shift depending on what it is you're producing. There you go. We're not going to have a third shift teaching class for classes here from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Is anybody going to sign up? No. No women? Okay. They draw the line. That's where the test number two ends. I didn't say back up and leave. <laughs> we are so desperately far behind. I ain't giving up 15 minutes. I'm sorry. I gave up a little bit of time to do a little bit of reviewing type thing in the beginning of the class, so there you go. So, with more students, you know, enroll, you know, with us, won't you just get paid more? 
Um, in the long run, yes. In the short run, no. In the short run, we the sort of damage leads gets pulled a little bit farther away from our next. We get the job security. We we quit the oh crap, am I next? So we've had a little bit of that these last couple of years. We've had to let some people go. So everybody else around here, or you know, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, whatever it is they say, whatever they ask, yeah, I'm doing work for you. I'm drilling. No, no kidding. I'm doing work for you people right now. But I'm doing it because I want to, my wife needs my paycheck. But when was the last time I got a pay raise? They gave, they finally, a year ago, they gave us a pay raise, and I think a year, two years ago, they gave us a pay raise, but we went like three, four years, no pay raise. And the pay raise they gave us these last couple of years, they didn't make up for the four years worth of no pay raises. So I'm buying less stock of paper than I was before. It's not dropping. It's not dropping. But eventually, they're going to be like, as our enrollment goes up, we need to hire more people. We're going to start looking to find, hire more better, more qualified candidates. And if we bring other people in, then the people that are already here is like, well, you're paying them how much? And they've only been here five minutes. And I've been here for 15 years. And you just pay raises will end up eventually happening. So, new stuff. Yes, free stuff. But the economy goes up, the economy goes down. It does grow constantly. Why? I give you hints. This word theory is on here somewhere. The answer is it depends. Or I don't know. Those are typical answers. <laughs> uh, you just come up with a theory. You can win a Nobel Prize in economics. It's absurd. Some of the theories that people have come up with. Uh, the uh, dude, one of the two dudes that won the Nobel Prize in econ economics last week basically said that new technology increases worker productivity. Uh, the dude won 20, 30 years ago a rational expectation. People make decisions based on their own best self interest. Just state the obvious, and you can get a Nobel Prize in economics. So that's your homework assignment. Come up with the most obvious something that maybe has a little something to do with the economy. Win yourself a Nobel Prize. They pay you like a million dollars. Hopefully, you want to share it with anybody, and then boom, there you go. I mean, I just, I just sort of like, oh, okay. and then I hear these things. I'm like, really? Yeah, and then just, just now, you know, they, they realize that. It's so obvious, it's like you just now realize that the obvious exists to the point you got to give somebody a Nobel Prize. Okay, so there are theories to try to explain why the business cycle happens, but then policies, government policies, try to control it. Does government like growth? Yeah. 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 Because when we were looking at growth, nothing but beautiful. All right. Jobs created, work being done, incomes going up, so the workers are happy, the people are happy, the voters are happy, so they'll reelect me. And where is they making more money? They're paying more money in taxes so that I can do all these other pet projects that I need to do in order to be reelected. And then there's that much more money the government has that I can see in my own pocket as far as it does. Ooh, I don't that. Right. The government likes growth, so they want to do things to promote growth. The government hates contraction, the opposite, because that causes a bunch of headaches. Because there got to be bad guys that are like, uh, we, we got to cut back things, cut back spending, let people go. As far as it's the government themselves, uh, we got to borrow money to try to stop the bleeding and all that kind of stuff. And so your taxes are going to be going up sometime in the future. So, the GDP can go up because of, in general, three things. Supply things, demand things, or monetary things. Supply shocks. These are, general, if you, I'll use the word shocks here. If, if it's expected, then it ain't a 
thanks for Christ. And that's just part of the way things happen. It's the unexpected changes is what disrupts them. If the expected our population went up by 3% last year, 3% the year before, 3% the year before that, it's probably going to grow up by 3% this year. Well, that is economic growth, but that doesn't surprise anybody, right? And that's sort of built in. Businesses know uh, 3% more people are going to make 3% more food. That just sort of, so you just should have a nice aesthetic. It's the unexpected is what causes it to not be nice and thick. And the shock is kind of unexpected. If I was to come up to you with a taser and then pull the trigger, that would be kind of unexpected, right? Yes. Supply shocks, these are things that will impact the supply side of things. Unexpected things that change the way businesses do business, change the way businesses can produce. Technology. Computers, the internet, y'all have no idea, y'all were born in the internet age, but I mean, how it just revolutionized the way businesses do things. Y'all have, y'all this, y'all don't know God, y'all just don't appreciate it. Go back 30 years ago. Sears, you know, a catalog company, they, they were like one of the biggest companies in the world, and they declared bankruptcy the other day, and they were about to die, but they were Sears, that they were, they were the internet, they were the Amazon.com from, like 1880 through the year 2000. You know, they were the world's Amazon. And then they also had Kmart that was second, oh, well, they were the lead dog until Walmart came along and then they were second only to Walmart. They did. Because of technology, the internet. And not the wisest of management. Technology will change our investment, change our consumption, and that is a result is going to change our the output of what the companies are producing, employment, and prices. For better or worse. Yes. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. New technology like uh, computers. Creating jobs in computers. Woohoo! Causes people lose jobs in typewriter repair work. Causes you go from having two secretaries banging away at a typewriter for $20,000 to you have one administrative assistant banging away on a computer for $30,000. Doing the same work, right? The technology has enabled that kind of stuff. Some people win, some people lose. It changes things. And as we were talking about right here earlier, change doesn't come smoothly, right? So, uh, demand shocks are going to be things that happen in the economy that change our buying. Our willingness and ability to buy as individuals, the government's willingness and ability to buy, businesses' willingness and ability to buy, war being one of them. A war is unexpected. How many of y'all expect to be going to war anytime soon? You did. Well, back in 2001, nobody was expecting that in 2002 we'd be invading Iraq and Afghanistan. But we didn't have a clue. We're just kicking along, waiting for the second week of college football and the first week of the NFL. Actually, it was a, we wait on the third week of college football and the second week of the NFL is what we were expecting in September of 2001. Little did we know that we were going to be in war before the Super Bowl. You didn't know that. Wars, other unexpected overemployment or underemployment periods that change things. Yep. Without, before we even went to Afghanistan, before we went to Iraq. September 12th, 2001. What was everybody doing? Y'all don't know. Y'all weren't born yet. September. Okay, y'all were barely born yet. Yeah. <laughs> you still watch it. You still watch it. You still watch it. You still I'm trying not to sing the song. Anyway. Oh. Uh, um, September 12th. Everybody's sitting home scared, watching TV. The only things that people were doing, buying were batteries, toilet paper, bread, milk. That was pretty much it. We weren't buying stuff. We were all scared and oh crap because you know, this has happened on uh, one day and then we're seeing all this news and then a couple days later, damn rather, and a couple of politicians get some white powdery substances coming in the mail. Ooh, it was anthrax. And then we're like, oh crap, well, take us in anthrax to damn rather. Well, why don't they do? What happens if the Marksville Speedway race the following weekend, early October? What if somebody takes a little bit of anthrax instead of mailing it to Dan Rather, they just go to the Marshall Speedway, open up a couple of ketchup containers, dump a little bit in there. Oh, dude, we were. That, that was my own idea. <laughs> it, it 
what you would do with them there's no just but that that I'm not gonna do that now right at But that was under consumption and under employment. We're staying at home and we're care we're scared and we're breaking out. Change the thing. Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Michael, change things. Some of us are sitting in the dark for five days with no internet. No TV. And while we're sitting there thinking about G, it would be nice if I could buy a generator. Anything that changes our willingness and ability to consume as business, as individuals, as businesses, or as government, it changes what happens. We're going to war, we get a new new politicians elected, and they, they have different priorities. They'll cut spending in some places, increase spending in other places. Change the system. <laughs> what she said. Um, but in monetary shocks, it, there's things that the you're on cruise control. Yeah, the point of cruise control is what? Your vehicle is going to maintain speed for you, right? But in maintaining speed, your car is going to be doing these little corrective accelerations and decelerations, right? It does these temporary little things. Well, that's kind of what the job of our, the Federal Reserve. They'll sit there, and while the economy's going along, they're going to be tweaking things. They'll raise interest rates a little bit. They'll lower interest rates a little bit. They'll increase the money supply. They'll decrease the money supply. Just to sort of smooth things out a little bit along the way. But if they do something, if there's a dramatic change there, excuse me. If there's a dramatic change there, uh, anyway, uh, if there's a dramatic change there in interest rates, suddenly everybody's like, oh crap, we're not going to buy. That can change things. It has nothing to do with our willingness and ability to consume, willingness and ability to produce, but just because there's a different amount of money out there, the interest rates are different, it changes our behaviors. The thing in 2008 is preventable. And we came close to trying to do a repeat because what ended up happening in 2002, we're all sitting at home going, oh crap, right? I'm scared. So I think I go, the government wanted us to get off of our butts and start spending money. So they gave us a $600 check and then a little bit later a $300 check. Said, go spend. Here's the money. Spend. They wanted us to spend. Another thing they did to spend, the Federal Reserve is like, well, they increased spending, we can lower interest rates. So it's cheaper for people to borrow, cheaper for businesses to borrow. So businesses will borrow money to buy tools and equipment that will be hiring people. Interest rates went down to an all-time low. All right, y'all are used to seeing TV commercials about zero percent financing for cars and trucks. You weren't seeing that 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh huh. And guess what? That's going away now because Fed interest rates have come up by three quarters of a point in the last few months, and they're going to keep going up. But interest rates were too low. They were artificial, historical low, almost zero. So you had people that could pretty much risk-free borrow money and buy stuff and not have to worry about interest payments. So then you had people, because money was so cheap, it became so much easier to buy houses. A bunch of people got involved with buying houses, buying second houses, buying each house, and that kind of stuff. And since people were buying, everybody's like, ooh, the demand is going up. So what happens to prices when the bank goes up? They go up. So it was just sort of this self feeding thing. It was easy to buy, so people were buying, prices were going up, which made more people say, oh, I'm going to buy a house now and I'm let the price go up and I'm going to sell it in a year or two and make me a quick $20,000 flip in this sucker, right? Without even doing the work, like you see on the HGTV. So what ended up happening is you had way too many houses being bought by people that were way in over their heads. Monetary shock. Because interest rates got pushed down, it changed our behavior. And then, well, and what ended up happening, and it went so to the extreme. So many people were buying so many houses and that kind of stuff, where finally it sort of hit me. Well, I don't want to go into all of that, but um, most of these loans that people were getting were a two year fixed loan, and then they went to a adjustable rate mortgage after that which means the interest rates was like a low rate for the first few years. But then after that second, after those few years, the interest rate goes up dramatically, which means people's payments went up dramatically. And then once that started kicking in, those people that were buying all those houses ain't buying houses anymore. They're saying, oh crap, I can't.
can't afford this. Let me sell this house now because I can't afford the payments on it anymore. So what ended up happening is the price of houses drops on And so what ended up happening that's when that whole artificial thing got bubbled up. That whole bubble popped. Recession 2008. Yeah, and there's other voodoo to go along with it, but that is just the ultra, ultra uber simple version of it. Any questions there? Uh, oh, a correction. Sometimes if the economy, which is a little bit what I was talking about, if, it, correct? if the economy is growing too fast, we're going to slow it down. It, it, it needs to slow down back to normal. The economy is going too fast, so that would be a correction. Stock market, it goes up, 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 people say, oh, it's crazy. And then the, correct, the housing market in 2008, this is going up more than it should, and it's self corrected. The old stocks buying and the government didn't play food, but the government's going to go from that. We'll talk about that next Thursday, but next Tuesday is with us. Be here with a smile on your face as long as you're hard to get. What? Yeah. No, this is not.